Hello, and welcome to I Watched It With My Wife. Uh, this is the podcast where Sarah and I watch movies together and review them. Some of them Sarah's seen, some of them she hasn't. So this week we watched Ralph Breaks the Internet, the sequel to Wreck-It Ralph. So Sarah, what did you think of Ralph Breaks the Internet? Well, <laughs> so this is another example of me not seeing the first movie before I've seen the sequel 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 <laughs> sequel the, the, uh, for nyquil on the ocean try sequel oh my god my tired is showing it was it was cute yeah the sequel Se yes sequel <laughs> am i saying this right <laughs> your sequel you're right <laughs> sorry um no i haven't seen the first one wreck it ralph so i think i've seen like bits and pieces of it but never really paid like attention to it so i i can't say if it's better than the first one but it was a cute movie um it was there was a lot of i mean it, it was of him breaking the internet so there was a lot of like internet um memes and references regarding websites that we use all the time like facebook and ebay and instagram and pinterest and youtube and you know all that stuff the storyline was was more not so much about the internet as much as it was about friendship which i can appreciate a good like friend story and how you know you your friends aren't always going to want to do what you want them to do you kind of have to let them do their thing which was really cute um, I liked it. I liked it. I thought it was cute. It wasn't my favorite. It's Pixar, right? Yeah. No, it is it's not, not a Pixar. No, this is from the uh, Walt Disney Animation Studios. Uh, you okay. would be surprised. Uh, Wreck-It Ralph and Ralph Breaks the Internet both look more like Pixar movies than they do Disney movies. Yeah, I thought it was a Pixar movie, and it's not, which I just learned now. So uh, I would have to say, as far as Disney movies goes, it's definitely not my favorite. But it wasn't a bad movie overall. Um, yeah, this falls this falls in the area era of Disney animation known as the Disney revival, which let goes it is the era we're currently in and goes from the princess and the frog, at least through Frozen 2. I don't know if the next movie where it all end up falling in there. This and Frozen 2 are the only two sequels to movies made in the revival that the sequels are also in the revival. And both of them kind of come up as good, but not great follow ups. Not as this one's not as good as Wreck-It Ralph in the same way Frozen 2 was not as good as Frozen. Doesn't make them bad. They're actually both very enjoyable sequels. I love some of the things there. You know, I'll, the the relationship between Vanellope and Ralph was great in the first movie. It's great in this movie. They had some great uh, some great cameos, some great Easter eggs. I love the. Uh, stuff with the Disney princesses and then bucking the trend at, at the end. And I love that they got the majority of the original voice cast back. Uh, the people who voiced the princesses in their original movies all came back except for Snow White, Cinderella and Aurora or Sleeping Beauty because, well, their actresses are either really old or have passed on because those are old movies. Yeah. But from um, from the Disney movies, princess movies, starting with The Little Mermaid through uh, Moana, because that was the most recent princess movie before Ralph Breaks the Internet. All of the original voice casts for all of them came back to voice those princesses. Yeah, I liked seeing the princesses, too. Um, I don't know. I liked I liked seeing them like casual. In, in a sense, like in the casual clothes. And I thought some of that, like, obviously, like the jokes and the references were funny and like. You know, it was cute. Yeah, I I think this the problem this sequel is going to have is that it's going to be one of those product of its time movies because a lot of the memes and stuff are not going to be funny in a few years. And so when you look back, it's like, oh, hey, yeah, I remember that. But you're not going to be sitting here like, oh, yeah, it's laugh out loud because of it. It'll have a nice little nostalgia pop, which I mean, Wreck-It Ralph was built on nostalgia of older video games, but there's more to work with in that sense that the nostalgia more feels retro rather than dated. I don't know. I didn't really find that. 
not yet, but some of the memes and stuff that they focused in, because this was only made 2018. It's three years ago. In another three years, you can look back. Oh, yeah, six years ago. That was funny, but it's not now sort of thing. May I, um, maybe. I mean, we're, so we're not there yet, so I can't say that. But yeah, no, but that's just kind of what I think is going to happen. It's going to be like when we watch plane trains and automobiles. And we're like, oh, they're smoking in the restaurant. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't do that anymore. Things change and some of them become classic while some of them become antiquated. And I feel like more of this is going to become antiquated. This is this was a great movie for 2018 that I don't know that it's going to hold up in 2028. It might not. We'll have to we'll have to rewatch it in twenty twenty eight and see what happens. Yeah, uh, I mean, mean not that's the only to way to know. It. True, I'm not opposed to I rewatching. Should, I it. should probably watch the first one too at some point, huh? You should. I, I really <laughs> enjoyed the first one and how they got all of the, uh, you know, all the various video game characters in there, and they brought some of them. You saw Sonic and Cubert in this one. Um, they had more than, and Pac Man was in this one. They had more than that. In the original. Uh, yeah. I loved... Uh, another thing I loved, one of my favorite recurring characters of the uh, Disney revival, or recurring actors of the Disney revival, has been Alan Tudyk. In this movie, he plays Knows More uh, for the internet. He is a lot of fun in this. It's not as much fun as he was as King Candy in the first one, but still a lot of fun. He pops up in almost every movie of the Disney revival. And also in Star Wars, Rogue, or in Rogue One, a Star Wars story, says he's got a great relationship with Disney, and it's always fun seeing him come back. For, for you know, just a reference to some of the roles he's had in there, he was uh, uh, the Duke of Wesselton in Frozen, and then was also Duke Weaselton in Zootopia. Yeah. Uh, yes, he played those. He plays Hey Hey the uh, the rooster in Moana. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, he was the main villain, King Candy. And Wreck It Ralph. Okay, it was a very bright movie, which I really liked because a lot of movies recently made a turn putting a lot of dark undertones and everything. And while that works for some movies, some movies it doesn't. And just every once in a while, you want to see something bright and happy, and I, I kind of like that. And they applied the darkness well when they went to the seedy underbelly of the internet, yeah, but the most dark of web. the dark web. But it was a uh, Mostly pretty bright, and I really enjoyed that. Well, they went into the dark web and kept it family friendly. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, there wasn't really anything in that part that was like dark webish, but you know, it was cute though. I again, I really, I did like this movie. I thought it was really cute. Not my favorite, not even close to my favorite Disney movie, but it was definitely cute. Something fun that you could definitely watch with the whole family. Yeah, absolutely. And when it comes to Disney sequels, I'm going to just stick with the, the sequels made by the main animation company because most of those direct to DVD, direct to video, direct to digital now sequels we got were from a a third studio called Disney Toon. And you could tell because the animation was completely different. But if you stick to the ones of the main Disney studio, the sequels up there, I like this better than Frozen 2. I like this better than the second Winnie the Pooh. I liked it better than Fantasia 2000. So I guess it's my second favorite sequel. The only one I really liked better than this was The Rescuers Down Under. And then, of course, you have all those sequels that were made by the other studio, which are plot wise are fine. But the animation just looks so wonky compared to the main studio's animation. It's a completely different style. And you could tell it if you ever you know go back and watch like, you know, The Return of Jafar and compare it to Aladdin or if you watch the Little Mermaid 2. The Little Mermaid 2 or Beauty and the Beast 2 or Tarzan 2. Or for yeah. some reason, they felt felt like every movie from the 90s needed a sequel. And then they, you know, but they were always straight to VHS and DVD. And then you watch it and it's like something was as a kid, you loved it. But looking as an adult, you're like, something's off about this. It just was. Those just weren't quite the like you were saying, like they, they just didn't hit the mark with it. I actually thought some of those sequels weren't actually Disney. No, nope, they like were the little mermaid too. I didn't realize that that was actually Disney. I thought it was like, I don't know. I didn't know Disney owned another 
Disney. In a, yeah. Disney owns several different studios. I thought it was like so. a bootleg Disney. Yeah, well, Disney has the rights to the characters, so you know that's how it works. But, yeah, uh, but they have like a bootleg Little Mermaid too. Oh well, yeah. Not a bootleg Little Mermaid second, but like a bootleg version of the Little Mermaid. Well, ye- yes, because the Little Mermaid is based off of a fairy tale. Uh, yeah. By Hans Christian Andersen, that is, um, it's the fairy tale is public domain, so you can make anything based off of the story. Yeah. But it's not the same in terms of characters within the movie even though they're the same characters they're also different yeah but there is a bootleg version of that and that's what i thought the sequels were was part of the bootleg but Uh, i guess not no all right so let's move on to sarah's favorite and only segment snacks with sarah so for tonight's snack we got a little lazy and just had some crackers with roasted red pepper hummus, which um, I love hummus. It's a good, you know, healthy snack. It's very filling. And we just had well, olive oil crackers, like the rosemary and olive oil crackers with the hummus. I don't know. It seemed like an often brand Triscuit because it was the woven crackers. Yeah, it was the big Y brand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was it was the brand for a local grocery store. Um, I bought the bootleg brand of crackers instead, <laughs> instead of the boot like little mermaid <laughs> just kidding um all right but it was they, it was a good snack right it like hit the spot and i didn't particularly like the crackers i had one cracker you didn't like the crackers i don't like the woven i don't like triscuits i don't like the woven crackers oh, so we had pita chips uh, yeah i yeah uh, i i tried a couple of them those i enjoyed better i just wasn't in the mood for those either oh the crackers i was in the mood for we didn't have so i'm sorry no nah, it's fine next time tell me what kind of crackers you want i'll buy them i thought we had some before <laughs> you went to the grocery store today that's okay uh, anyway so now on a scale of one to ten how would you rank ralph breaks the internet i'm gonna give it a five it was good it was a good, solid movie. It wasn't great. There was nothing super special or stand out about it. It had some funny parts. It had some really good parts. Honestly, there were parts of the movie that it was, like, really hard for me to stay awake at, which could be why I sound so tired right now, because I did just watch a movie. But there were parts of the movie it was really hard for me to stay awake and um, that were kind of harder to hold my attention. So, but it wasn't like a bad movie. I didn't hate it. I wasn't mad at it. I didn't think it was like stupid. I liked the plot line and everything like that. I just, it was just a average movie to me. Yeah, I give it a five. It wasn't good. It wasn't bad. It was pr- pretty average. It was, uh, it's enjoyable. It's one that I think would have been better on the big screen at the theater all, with all the sights and sounds. I think it would have been a lot of fun there. And then when you get home, it's just not as fun. If we had a bigger TV, maybe it would have been fun. But we got a surround sound. Yeah, or if we had a surround sound, but we don't. Uh, So it was it was fine. It was enjoyable. I laughed in spots. I would watch it again if I'm doing like a double feature where I watched Wreck-It Ralph and Ralph Breaks the Internet. But this is not a sequel where I'm ever going to say, hey, let's throw on Ralph Breaks the Internet. See, I would watch it again, but I would not go to the movies to watch this if i think if i would have went to the movies to see this movie i think i would have been disappointed not just just because of how expensive it is to go to the movies and like that's why i go to matinees they're cheaper well no but just like i don't know i don't think it's worth 20 bucks wouldn't be 20 bucks if you go to a matinee they're cheaper again i wouldn't pay 20 dollars for the movie in the store and i would not rush out to see this in theaters if it ever came back in theaters or anything oh no 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 i would not but rush out this to see is it. not this is not exactly um it's not a bad movie by any means watch it with your kids it's fine and again i would watch it again on like disney plus that we already pay for um good background movie but not anything like i i would not go see this in theaters no neither would i but 
that's just me. I would not go see it in theaters if it came back around in a re-release. No, but I probably would have walked away with more enjoyment from it in theaters the first time. Maybe. I wouldn't be investing in surround sound for it either. No. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll do it for this episode of I Watched It With My Wife. You can uh, check us out on uh, any of your local podcatchers. And we are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and Anchor. And you can also get, find us on our website, withmywifepod.com. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye. See you next time.